This Kindle Paperwhite has more than three times the battery life of a normal model. And no, this isn't some trick where I just explain how to turn down the brightness settings or something like that. This physically has a battery that is 3.3 times larger, so it will run 3.3 times longer without changing a single setting. I thought this would be easy when I first started, but this ended up being one of the most frustrating projects I have ever completed. However, I have now figured it out, so I can explain to you how you can perform this mod on your own Kindle. Before I proceed, there are a few caveats and disclaimers to get out of the way. This will absolutely void your warranty. You could very well damage your device. This involves working with lithium batteries and I'm not qualified enough to offer any kind of safety guarantee. It could burst into flames and burn your house down. That's especially true because it requires circumventing one of the safety measures that Amazon built into the Kindle. And finally, this will only work with the 11th generation Kindle Paperwhite that has the warm light 6.8 inch display. Oh, and it won't be waterproof anymore. Still with me? Okay, let me show you my design. The new battery is 5,000 milliamp hours compared to 1,500 milliamp hours for the standard battery. That is far too large to fit in the original enclosure, so I designed a new back. It makes the device thicker than normal, and the cases on the market won't fit. I don't put a case on my Kindle Paperwhite for protection, but rather to make it easier to hold. Without a case, that gets very uncomfortable. With the case, I can sort of put the flap between my fingers, and that lets me hold it comfortably for several hours, even while laying on my side in bed at night. I didn't want to lose that comfort, so I designed this with two stretchy straps on the back. I think this is pretty clever. It looks nice. It doesn't take up too much space, was cheap to do, and provides a secure and comfortable grip. Other than that, the enclosure is pretty much the same as the original. It is thicker, but not as bad as you might think. For actual day-to-day -day use, it doesn't make a difference to me. I'll talk more about it in a moment, but designing this was the hardest part of the project. When I started planning this project, the idea seemed straightforward. Just swap out the battery for a larger one and 3D print a new back to accommodate that. I was wrong. Most devices like this use rechargeable lithium batteries that connect to the device's primary PCB through a pair of wires, one positive, one negative. But as Samsung's Galaxy Note 7 famously proved, lithium batteries are prone to dangerous combustion. For that reason, they require safety circuitry to prevent conditions that could lead to fires. Those mostly relate to charge and discharge rates, short circuiting, and temperature. To make life easier for everyone, most battery manufacturers build that circuitry right into their battery packs. The only necessary external connections are those positive and negative wires. However, that isn't always the case. In some situations, particularly when space is at an extreme premium, the battery pack may not contain all of that circuitry and will instead offload some of it to the device. Depending on the design, that may necessitate some additional connections. As I'm sure you've guessed by now, this is indeed the case with the 11th generation Kindle Paperwhite. The battery connects to the device's main board through a flex cable with a tiny connector. That connector supports six connections four more than we would need for just positive and negative. So what are those four connections? They were helpfully labeled on the cable in our DNI, RT2, NC, and ID. After a bunch of research and experimentation, I was able to identify the function of three out of those four. DNI stands for do not install. I found that earlier versions of the Kindle Paperwhite had an additional thermistor and it was connected to that pin. RT2 stands for resistor thermal two, or something like that. This is the connection to the thermistor on the battery pack that tells the Kindle if it gets too hot. More on that later. NC stands for not connected, and as far as I can tell, this has never been in use. And finally, there is ID, and I think that probably stands for identification. I wasn't able to determine its purpose, and it doesn't seem to do anything except present a constant resistance. Leaving it disconnected has an affected functionality. Now, if we wanted to replicate the original battery pack, we would need to connect a thermistor to the RT2 pin, but that thermistor would have to exactly match the characteristics of the original, because we don't have any way to alter the target parameters to suit a different model. Some testing showed that the Kindle does not work properly without the thermistor connected. It will come on for a little while, then turn itself off. That's presumably a safety measure because it is seeing an infinite resistance instead of a resistance that corresponds to a safe temperature. That was a problem because I couldn't identify the exact thermistor used in the original battery pack. I could, however, measure its resistance while subjecting it to different temperatures. 
While doing so, I was able to determine that it sat at about 100,000 ohms at room temperature. The new 5,000 milliamp hour battery I bought has all the protection it needs built right in, so I concluded that an additional thermistor wasn't actually necessary for safety. The solution was then obvious. I simply connected a regular old 100,000 ohm resistor to the RT2 pin. As far as the Kindle is concerned, the battery is always at room temperature, and the battery's built-in safety circuitry should keep it from exploding. For the battery and resistor connections, I designed a simple flexible cable. I have the files uploaded with a link in the description, and you can have this cable made by a PCB manufacturer. And that brings us to the next challenge, the connector. This tiny little sucker was a huge pain. There are no markers to identify it, and no amount of image searching yielded an identical result. But to avoid modifying the Kindle's mainboard, I needed the exact same connector. I spent days searching and searching, seeking help on Reddit and sifting through endless catalogs trying to find a match. I was about to give up on the whole project when I finally identified it. The HiRose BM22L-6P-V51. It was so hard to find because the manufacturers and suppliers didn't have photos of that specific model, only other variations. But that was it, and I was able to order some from AliExpress. Once I had that, I was able to modify my flex cable design to accommodate the connector and the resistor. It also has pads for an ID connection resistor in case that ever becomes necessary. The other end of the cable has two big pads for the positive and negative battery connections. Putting this together does require some SMD soldering skills. I recommend a hot plate as hot air tends to move the components around and melt the connector body. The pins on the connector are tiny and any shifting will screw things up. If you're planning this mod yourself, that soldering is the only part that's difficult. But my frustrations were just beginning because I still had to design the enclosure back. My hubris was high since I worked as a mechanical designer for several years. CAD and 3D modeling are usually my comfort zones, so I thought this would be the easy part. But the shape of the enclosure is tricky and I made a mistake. I tried to 3D scan it. I had recently reviewed the SEAL 3D scanner for this channel, and I thought it would make this step simple. Boy, was I wrong. I spent literally dozens of hours attempting to get a good model from the scans without success. I tried every angle, setting, and lighting environment imaginable. I sprayed the entire thing with a matte paint to provide an ideal surface. I glued these unique 3D printed shapes all over to help the 3D scanner maintain tracking. But nothing worked. No matter what I tried, I just couldn't get a complete model that was accurate and usable. I should have given up long before I reached that point, but the sunk cost fallacy had its grip on me. Finally, after days and days of tearing my hair out, I had to admit the truth. 3D scanners suck and they aren't suitable for anything except figurines. That admission led me back to my roots and I decided to model the enclosure from scratch. Just like in the good old days, I took measurements with a cheap pair of digital calipers and a lot of trial and error. I printed several iterations of the design at home and ordered professional prints. Those included resin, MJF, and SLS printed versions. I wanted to see which process yielded the best results. I found that standard resin worked the best. It has a smooth finish with minimal warping and shrinkage, though I think it would be stronger with a tiny bit of flexible resin mixed in. With the winner chosen, I carefully painted the enclosure and added the straps. After months of work, I was finally ready to snap it into place and admire the result of my genius. And, of course, it wasn't right. The fit was a bit off and I didn't love the shape or feel of the design. The humpback was kind of ugly and the big flat areas made it prone to warping. But after so much work, I wasn't ready to accept a mediocre final result. That forced me back to the drawing board and I completely redesigned the enclosure. This has a more traditional rounded shape but retains the straps. I improved the fit and added a lot of reinforcing ribs to prevent warping. After a few days of painting and sanding and painting and sanding, I had something I was proud of. I think this looks really nice and it's comfortable to hold. This new and improved Kindle Paperwhite works just like the original, but with triple the battery life. If you weren't aware, I'm an author and write for a living, so it probably wouldn't surprise you to learn that I read a lot. Now I can go a few weeks between charges, which is awesome. To close out this video, I'm going to explain how you can perform this modification with your own Kindle. The first step is to absolve me of any and all responsibility. 
I've warned you, so it isn't my fault if you break your Kindle or it bursts into flame. Next, download my flex cable and enclosure design files and send those off to your preferred service. I recommend the sponsor of this video, PCBWay. They are affordable and their quality is truly professional. I usually receive my orders within a week or two, which is very impressive. In addition to the PCB, you can also order the 3D printed enclosure from PCBWay. Their 3D printing service is very versatile with several different processes and materials to choose from. Just upload the model I provided and they'll take care of the rest. You can use a link in the description to get a $5 credit towards your first order. While you're waiting for those, you can order the battery, resistors, and connectors. I'll provide links to those in the description. It's easiest to find the elastic strap at a craft or fabric store. It's just standard half inch wide stuff. When all your parts arrive, you can start painting the enclosure. There are lots of guides on how to get a nice finish with spray paint, so I won't go into detail here. Then carefully solder the connector, resistor, and battery onto the flex cable. Pay special attention to the connector. Orientation matters, so check that it mates with the connector on the Kindle's mainboard. Speaking of, the enclosure comes apart with force. I'll put a link in the description to a video that walks you through how to do that and how to remove the battery. Just a tip, a few drops of goof off will help loosen the adhesive holding the battery down, which will make it much easier to remove. With all of that done, you're ready for assembly. Connect the new battery and turn on the Kindle to make sure it works. Assuming it does, put the button and LED light tube into the 3 printed enclosure pack. Use a dab of glue to hold the light tube in place, then pull the straps through nice and taut and use some E6000 glue to form a continuous loop. Some spring clip things will help keep them secure until the glue dries. Wait 24 hours for that, then snap the new enclosure into place and you're done. This project almost broke me and I was close to throwing in the towel on several occasions. For something that seemed so simple, it was very frustrating, but I'm glad I kept going and I'm proud of the result. The standard unmodified Kindle Paperwhite already has fantastic battery life, but I'm sure that other heavy readers will appreciate the ability to triple that. As I mentioned, the most difficult step in performing this modification is soldering the components onto the battery cable. If the demand is there, I would love to partner with a company that can provide a kit to customers. If you happen to be in a position to do that, then please get in touch. For everyone else, let me know if you perform this modification or if you want to see more projects like this. Thanks for watching.